Good afternoon boys and girls and welcome to the 26th episode of Love at First Scent with me Persilaise here on Facebook Live. A very happy new year to all of you. I'll say my hellos properly in a few minutes as per usual but um, I think we are still allowed to say happy new year to each other while we're in, in January. I think that's the sort of French way and the French usually get those sorts of things right. So happy new year to all of you. I think we should start by smelling the perfume and um, I've got a, a, a little bit of a dilemma today because you can see that I've got the brand new ones from Francis Kirkshion and um, I don't know which one to start with. In a sense, it, it probably doesn't matter because I have a feeling we'll do both of them. I don't think I'm going to be able to resist trying them much longer. I received the samples a few days ago and I thought, oh, okay, I'll save them for love at first scent. Um, they, they both have the same name. So if you look, you can see that they're both called pose for thumbnail. They're both called um, Gentle Fluidity. I forgot what they were called for a second there. But on one of them, um, the word fluidity is in capital letters, and on the other one, it's the other way around. It's, it's the word gentle that's in capital letters. And on the back, they're just differentiated by colour. So this one is called gold, because it's the one with the gold top. No milk reference intended, and that's called silver. Keep the hellos coming, by the way. I will respond in, in, in a few minutes after I've done this one. Let me just do all my usual things and make sure that the stream is coming through on the tablet. Yeah, apparently Persil is, is live now, which is good. I would like to start with the gold one for no other reason other than the fact that I'm kind of more gold than silver, as you may have imagined. So, first one of the year. Do keep the comments coming. I will. I will look at all of them. Uh, tell me about what your festive season was like. Uh, tell me where you got any perfumes for um, you know as gifts if you celebrate Christmas or even if you don't celebrate Christmas. Um, so here we go. Here is gentle fluidity, and the gold one is the one where the word fluidity is in capitals. So it's fluidity that's um, emphasised. And I, I do think that uh, Francis Kirkjohns, or he himself, or his people, and I know he has a lot to do with everything in his company anyway, they, they definitely know what they are doing uh, when it comes to packaging. Because the Kirkjohn packaging is always, always manages to balance um, luxury and a touch of bling with, with modernity. There is, there is nothing old fashioned about this, and yet it doesn't feel cheap in any way. It doesn't feel as though they, they're, they're cutting corners because you've, you've got your outer packaging there and then you've got the inner one which is the sort of generic one I guess because it doesn't actually have the name of the perfume on it but that's fine. And then you go in and you've got a little booklet with a little note and all of these things I suppose do matter for some people. Um, and then you've got uh, the fragrance itself. I've always liked his bottles. I like the fact that um, He's sort of got variations on the bottles according to the size of the scent. And appropriately enough, this one has the gold cap. I'm guessing that the, the other one will have the sort of silvery zinc-like cap. Um, and in case you hadn't worked it out already, I'm a little bit nervous about this because I'm so hoping um, that we're starting the year with a good one. Kirkshan is an, in is an interesting, uh, in terms of the brand, is, is a very interesting brand to watch because um, it, 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 or at least until recently, it was independent. It, it's now got connections with LV, LVMH, unless I'm mistaken. And when it started, I suppose, in terms of its style, the actual styles of the perfumes, Kirkshire, I think, was trying to find his way and work out what his audience would want. And it would seem, in terms of sales and in terms of the direction in which he's taken the scents, it would seem that um, what his audience have asked for is for things to veer in the direction of mainstream. So for instance, Absolute Paul Soir, which not just me, but many consider to be one of the best things he made for the brand, um, is kind of being sidelined because it, because it didn't do terribly well. And there's an interview that I did with Coach Jean, uh, a while ago, which you can find on Persolace.com, where he explains that, you know, he, he much as he'd like to, he can't sustain perfumes that um, that don't sell. And so things with him have become, um, I don't want to be, say safer, because there is always something interesting about, about what he does, but I guess they've become, um, 
maybe a little bit more accessible, perhaps with the exception of his Baccarat Rouge perfume, which is a divisive one. Now, I, I'm really not a fan of it at all, but I know it has been a huge hit, not just for him, but just for brands like his. I mean, you, 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 it, it's very rare um, to smell a non-mainstream perfume a lot when you're out and about in London. But you do smell the Baccarat a lot. And um, probably quite cleverly, it, 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 it is a bit of a Marmite scent in the sense, that, in the sense that I know some people, including a colleague actually, who just adore it and cannot get enough of it. Whereas I can't get past a very, very difficult, almost toilet cleaner-like aspect to it. I mean, feel free to, to weigh in on, on Baccarat Rouge. I can just see one comment. I will get to these, but I can just see that Nafia has said is iconic. I always smell it and do like it. There you go. I mean, it, it has very quickly become a very noticeable scent. Um, and by the way, if you would like a, a, a more affordable version, then do check out Burberry Her, which of course is made by Kirkjian as well. Um, so I, I guess where I'm going with that is that, is that the Baccarat is almost an anomaly because it doesn't smell very ordinary in inverted commas, but it obviously struck a chord and lots of people love it. So this is all an incredibly long preamble to say, I can't wait to see what this is like. And it's already been ages since I've said, I think we should start by smelling a perfume. So here we go. This is gold, gentle fluidity. Please let this be good. I want the first perfume of the year to be good, even though the first month of the year is almost over. Okay, here we go. Gentle fluidity, gold from Maison Francis Kergian. <sighs> Deep breath. Okay. I'm not running for the hills straight away. But it, it is interesting because it, it, this kind, if only you could smell it, if only I could just go ping and then you can smell it. This sums up what I was trying to say about him. At least at first sniff, definitely well composed, definitely doesn't make you cringe or make you think, oh my god, you know, what a... Versace, Dolce & Gabbana, insert any other, you know, generic brand name, what were they thinking when they released this? It absolutely doesn't make you think that at all. And yet, it has that very sheer, very translucent, very luminous, um, very easy to wear quality that, that, you know, for instance, you would never get, uh, especially that easy to wear bit, that you'd never get, for example, from Amouage. Christopher Chong at Amouage is always trying to push the envelope. He's always trying to just make things that are, are a bit more out there, a bit more edgy. You know, nothing about this brand is edgy, I guess, in terms of their sen sense. Although, well, as I said, forget Baccarat Rouge for the moment. That is an anomaly, because I see that as edgy in the wrong way. But anyway, so it's very musky uh, and, 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 and that, that again, I think, makes things smell more mainstream somehow. Um, and then everything else is, as you would expect from somebody of Coach Jean's calibre, very, very well balanced and very fine-tuned. So you've got, you've got a spicy element there, you've got maybe a sort of vanilla ambry element, but, but nothing, is, nothing is screaming. Maybe Maybe the one thing that's, that, that's coming to the fore of it is a kind of candied feel, maybe a sort of candied amber, almost heading into the kind of odd sweetness of Baccarat Rouge. But, and I'll take a look at the press release in a minute because I have got it, gentle fluidity actually, thus far, seems like a very good name for this because it is, it's gentle, it's limpid, it does have movement to it. It, it feels as though it would be fluid. Um, it, it feels as though it would almost be just kind of like a few steps behind you as you're, as you as you're walking along, you know, sort of trailing the sillage behind you. There's nothing forced about it. And it has that light filled quality, which again, maybe you might expect from something that's called gold. I don't like putting things in gender terms either, as you know, but this is probably trying to be more overtly feminine. And I would imagine, as long as it doesn't get too sweet, that it'll actually dry down 
quite interestingly. So mm. let, let us take a look at the press release for them. I think I think I will do uh, um, silver as well because I'm intrigued. Let me let me do comments before before press release because there've been quite a few. So thank you very much for those. <clears throat> very quickly then. Thank you very much for tuning into the live stream of episode 26 of Love at First Scent with me, Percy Lays. Please give me thumbs up and hearts because, you know, I'm a 21st century person and I need external validation. Otherwise, I have no value whatsoever on this earth. Um, I hope you um, all have had a good start to the new year. Fahmi says, happy to see you live again in early 2019, 2019 sir. Very happy to be seen. Thank you very much, Fahmi, for writing. Angeline says, happy new year. Happy new year to you as well. Thank you very much for tuning in. <clears throat> good afternoon from snowy oh there, there goes the validation on the screen did you catch that <clears throat> good afternoon from snowy stockholm says vitali all oh, no snow here but um, enjoy the snow uh greeting from malaysia this time says peggy you do get around don't you what's it like over there it must be quite late i would have thought no uh nice to see you in the new year yeah it, it is good to be back i was determined to actually do the first episode um before we before um, the end of January. Nafia says, uh, no, sorry, I missed one. Joanna says, looking forward to your thoughts on Alien. Mm, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I think we will get round to at least one of the aliens. And then Nafia also said, looking forward to see what you think about the alien. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of intrigued as well. Roger says, hi there from Boston. Hi, right back to Boston. Veronica, Happy New Year and good afternoon from Germany. Thank you very much indeed. And then I read out uh, Nafi's comment. And then Susie Nightingale, thank you very much for tuning in, says, Hi, Dariush. Thank you very much for tuning, Susie. <coughs> and Mary goes, Yay, I managed to catch you live. Hang on, I need to cough properly. <coughs> <coughs> well, thank you for tuning in. <coughs> right. It, after the live broadcast, as you know, uh, gremlins permitting, we have had a few issues with those in the past, but after the live broadcast, um, the intention is for this video to remain on Facebook, so please do leave any questions if you're watching after the live stream. And then what I also usually do is upload it to YouTube, so if you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and ask a question, leave a comment. And my drive at the moment on YouTube is to get to a thousand subscribers, and we're kind of slowly inching towards a thousand subscribers. So tell your friends, just see, see, see whether they would consider subscribing to the Persilace channel. Okay. The, a little a bit of press stuff on uh, the Kirk John that we just smelled. As a keen observer of society and its evolution, Francis Kirk John mirrors his era by telling stories through fragrance. Okay, fair enough. Gentle fluidity is his answer to contemporary questions on gender identity. Yeah, I think we probably kind of guessed that from the name, so that's fine. Gentle, because benevolence is one of Maison Francis Kirk John's core values and fluidity because we are all free to express our personality without having to submit to diktats, just like the Maison has unlimited creative freedom. Okay, Aglia says hello from London, where you've got rain, have you? No, we haven't got rain down in the south, sorry. Gentle fluidity is the name of two new eau de parfum created by our in-house perfumer, a single name for two distinct olfactory identities, the same name shared by two creations, whose distinctive feature is to be composed of the same ingredients. Okay, I am intrigued enough to carry on, so let's see what else they've got to say. Uh, right, of the 49 ingredients used to compose this perfume duo, interesting, Francis Kirkjohn wished to highlight six, which make up the olfactory silhouette of each of the two variations. Juniper berry, nutmeg and coriander seed essences, musks, ambery woods and vanilla. In their own way, these two eau de parfum become comfortable and reassuring. In Gold's generous enveloping trail, we can find coriander seed essence and an overdose of musks and vanilla. Okay, well, we picked up on two of those. The floral spicy note of coriander seeds brings, just like musks, ethereal volume and a lingering trail. In the base notes, the gourmand reassuring notes of the vanilla accord enhanced by the ambery woods reveal a radiant, bright silhouette. How reassuring, actually, to read a press release that makes sense. Mm -hmm. What do you think? In silver, which we haven't smelt yet, but may as well read it, nutmeg and ambery woods are dominant and release a vibrant, comfortable trail. As for juniper berry essence, it leads to an ascending, ultra-fresh aromatic note, mm, Okay, similar to a gin frappe effect, balanced by the dry, slightly balmy, spicy notes of nutmeg. The base notes reveal ambery wood facets, ranging from sweet and enveloping to powerful and dry. So pretty much they want to have it all, I suppose. Well, we may get round to silver. 
Yeah, I suppose the coriander is maybe the warmth that I'm picking up, although I, I, I didn't pick up coriander per se. And is there anything else? Because there's bits of stuff that... Uh, let's have a look at this one then, under the heading Creative Audacity. When Francis Kirk John is asked how long it takes him to create a new perfume, he usually mentions the number of years that have passed since the beginning of his career. Actually, yeah, he's done that one to me as well. 25 years. For 25 years, he has moulded olfactory matter and highlighted its visible and invisible facets. Once again, Francis Kirk John disrupts the rules of fragrance creation with a disconcerting composition exercise. Disconcerting? I could well, actually know. If anything, it's quite concerting. With gentle fluidity, he unveils two eau de parfum from two utterly different olfactory worlds. One features a woody aromatic scent, the other musky oriental notes. Maybe not so utterly different. Anyway, by drawing from the same list of ingredients and going beyond the concept of perfumery for women and men or mixed. I see. So beyond the concept of gendered, but well, yeah, you know, that, that's not new either. When he overdoses some ingredients, he underdoses others because fragrances, like all the things that move us, are essentially about balance and expected effects. Sorry, am I being really pernickety? Doesn't that just kind of happen automatically if you overdose something that kind of then proportionally everything gets else gets underdosed? I don't know. Is that not? Anyway, doesn't matter. We'll let him have that one as well. No more feminine or masculine. There is a personality, a sensitivity, a gentle fluidity between all gender identities. In order to visually tell these two creations apart, a special role was given to the colour of the name and the cap and to the balance of letters which I think we figured out. So I suppose we probably don't need to go on with this one. There's a little bit about the company as well and the business. Okay, we will probably um, get back to silver. Uh, Karina says, a treat. Hello from Bristol. Thank you very much indeed. So pleased you tuned in. And Peggy, God, it was too good to last. Yeah, I know that last one. <laughs> I sort of thought, oh, I probably should have read that last page. The press release started so well too, then a lot of fluffing around. Never mind, never mind. But, you know, we, we, we need to be grateful for small mercies, I suppose. Okay, I won't sniff it again. Is it Mugler time? There is, a, there is a classic choice for today as well, which I hope you will all like. I'm pretty sure that you will at least know it. Susie says, yeah, personally, I'm all for pr press releases getting shorter in 2019. I know what you mean, although... There, oh, somebody's already given you a thumbs up, Susie. I can't do that very well. I, I would give a thumbs up to every comment. Shorter. I know what you mean. I know what you, what you mean. A pithy would be good, but but I must admit, I do I do sometimes enjoy trying to figure out what on earth they were saying um, when some of them were written. I mean, Serge Lutin's Serge, Serge Lutin's take take the biscuit, I suppose. But but I do love their press releases too. I think it's alien time, don't you? Is it alien time? Yeah, I think we should do alien. But I'd like to do alien woman. Um, we'll, we'll see how we get on. This is, so, pose for thumbnail. Let's do a nice little smiley pose for the thumbnail because finding thumbnails for YouTube is so difficult. Roger says there seems to be pressure for content. Um, yeah, I guess I guess that there is a kind of sense of maybe if you bludgeon the journalists into submission, then out of the sort of four thousand words, perhaps they may write ten on you. Yeah, there is there is an element of that. Susie, it just feels like it's twenty pages of fluff and one page of pertinent inf information. A lot of the time, yeah. Frederick Mal, until recently, certainly had done I think quite. Um, well, genuinely useful press releases. You know, they talk about materials. They'd actually talk about the nitty-gritty of what went into the scent. Anyway, you interrupted my posing for thumbnails. But anyway, but, but do feel free to interrupt. This is Alien Alien Fusion, which actually has written on the packaging, the new fragrance, which is odd. You don't, you don't sort of often have the advertising on the fragrance. You know, what will they happen in a year's time? Will they just not say, will, will it say the less new fragrance? Alien Fusion, cheesy, cheesy grin, cheesy alien smile, from Mugler. Uh, in a talisman bottle. Anything on the back? No, except for the join the Mugler circle. I miss the days when we were allowed to say um, Thierry Mugler. The red matches your jumper. I guess it does. Look, perfect camouflage. Look, it's an alien popping out of... No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, okay, what is the talisman bottle like. Oh yeah, okay. It's this bottle. <laughs> Ooh, cool colour though. No, I do like that, I must admit. What is that? It, is, it, it's not quite red, it's not quite fuchsia, it's... Cherry? Is it cherry red? I don't know. Very cool colour though. Quite, quite, quite lurid. 
Um, uh, I should say before we get into this one that I think original proper alien is amazing I think it is uh, one of the best mainstream scents out there still and I wish that Mugler made more things like it and were as brave as they were when they when they made alien it must be <coughs> still one of the most bizarre woody musky jasmines ever made Red for Valentine's Day, says Al. Oh, you romantic. I suppose this might turn out to be the Valentine's Day edition. Maybe I'll do one more before Valentine's Day. We'll see. Um, and, and, and some of the um, variants of Alien, I think, have been great. I forget which one it was, but was there an absolute? Uh, it was just extraordinary. Karina says, it's like a giant infinity stone. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> this is... So if I suddenly get swept away in an ash of your bike sort of disintegrate into into dusty ash then you will know that at the bottom of all of this was um what's his name apocalypse no what was his name oh this is really bad if our art's watching I'm, I'm failing all the friendship tests now it wasn't it wasn't um galactus it was a, apocalypse wasn't either baddie never mind okay Alien Fusion. <clears throat> I haven't looked at the press release I don't know why it's called fusion I don't know what that's all about let us see how recognisably alien it is and what the Mugler people have done. Where can that go? You can sit over there, alien. Just be good, otherwise we'll get Sigourney onto you. Okay, right. <clears throat> Thanos, thank you very much. I knew it was some time thing. Susie says, funnily enough, the original alien doesn't suit me, but the variants do. Okay, anyone in particular? Hang on, I need to click to see more of your comment. Is this gonna work? The Essence Absolute is fabulous. Yes, Essence Absolute wasn't that just extraordinary and I've still got my bottle somewhere. It was just, it, it was, it was the it was the most decadent alien. Thanos, look at all you Avengers fans. I knew I had the best viewers. Um, Essence absolutely is my fave too. Says Nafia Peggy. Yes, please do something soppy and romantic for Valentine's. The new rose one from Deep Teak, for example. I'd have to get hold of it first. Soppy and romantic isn't really me though. Mm, I don't know. I don't know. You'd have to be sort of. Well, I don't know. Did, Nafia and Susie, who have actually met me in person, is soppy and romantic. Do you think that would work? All right, I am already getting whiff of recognizable um, alien. Susie says it's very buxom yet comforting. I'm guessing you mean the essence absolue. Yeah, bu buxom is good, and actually, I think they reflected that in the bottle, didn't they? Okay, unquestionably alien, which which is a good thing. You know, if you're getting a flanker, you don't want to be fobbed off with something that there's no relationship to. Um, Charming, I'd say, says Nafia. Oh, <laughs> do you think? You obviously don't know me very well yet. <laughs> Faking sincerity is something. Anyway, so. Um, what is it? I suppose it's, it's definitely got that weird otherworldly jasmine. It's definitely got the woody musky cashmere round base, <clears throat> which also makes you think of velvet. Susie says he is a charmer. I'm so not, not really. But, but thank you very much for saying that. Mate, is it fruitier at the top? Um, and I'm wondering, I mean, the chances are I'm going to pick up the little press release note thing and, uh, and everything I say to you is going to turn out to be wrong, but I'm getting pepper. I'm getting a really, really strong sense of black pepper. Almost as though somebody's gone and taken a few drops of... Um, Nafia says, I got the ginger. It turned very... Well, maybe that's kind of what I'm thinking. There is something hot and spicy. Um, but what I was going to say is almost like somebody taking a few drops of Comme de Garçons black pepper and put them over the top of Alien. But it's interesting and it's kind of, I want, all right, let me get the press release because I wonder if the fusion thing, are they actually trying to make female Alien more masculine and maybe Alien Man more feminine? I don't know, which would tie in so beautifully with our Kirk John entry just now. And I genuinely did not plan that at all. Right. Uh, alien fusion and alien man fusion. The duality of an eclipse. The duality of an eclipse. Quite a cool image, I must say, I think. Hang on, let me hold it up this way. How's that for a thumbnail? Uh, and I think there's one on the woman. Okay, let's read this one. <clears throat> Are you ready for this? M Mugler pr press releases are worth a few chuckles normally. Alien resonates like an invitation to the beauty of all that is extraordinary. This iconic perfume is revisited in a new interpretation, Alien Fusion. 
that captures the light of the most extraordinary of all phenomena, the eclipse. Which is an absence of light, isn't it? Never mind. In the alien desert, dunes of ochre and ice reflections are drawn on the horizon as far as the eye can see. A supernatural light is reflected in this sea of sand. This is where the sun meets the moon. Fusion of day and night, an eclipse occurs. The perfume is so much better than this. <clears throat> this new alien pillar... Oh, okay, perfume industry speak for this is not a flanker. This is going to be a whole bona fide alien of its own. This new alien pillar is inspired by the fusion of opposing stars by divulging two fragrances... That is not the right verb, is it? Which individually and together play the game of an enchanting hot, cold contrast. No, I will not reread that sentence. Both alien fusion and alien man fusion share the same origin of a burning fusion. <laughs> a hot, cold duo spiced with ginger and cinnamon, completely one of a kind. Comment from Peggy. A lot of um, perfume cosmetic houses have gone red for Chinese New Year season. Ooh, interesting cultural cross-reference there. Oh my God, totally Avengers. Oh, Karina's still on the Avengers. The Soul and Reality Stone. Oh, I see this, yes. Do you, well, you know, people have got to be inspired by something. I wouldn't be at all surprised if, if they're inspired by... And this is a bit Doctor Strange, isn't it? Like, here comes Dormammu coming... To, anyway. Um, so, a, if for her alien fusion, an interplay of hot, cold contrasts, spicy and fiery brightness blends in the fragrance trail of exceptional heat, unsettled by a radiant orange blossom. This is... It's just like pick out the key word, isn't it? And then maybe it might make some sense. Rising in power, jasmine sandback, the signature ingredient and a flower of the sun, gives way to radiant orange blossom through its intense fragrant trail. Da -da 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 -da. Then it says explosive revelation. When the fusion begins, the surging notes of ginger, with an asterisk, well, we'll get to that, fuse with a delicious spicy and overdosed cinnamon, like two metals that are about to melt into each other. Yeah, still, the perfume itself is actually a lot better than this. And the cinnamon and the ginger, it says, are raw materials derived from a sustainable development programme that promotes protection of sources and fair compensation for producers. Jolly good. Not Definitely not backed by Thanos, then. And then there's a torrid revelation. <laughs> you don't want any of those on a Sunday afternoon, really. As the heat rises gradually, the fragrance grain gains in sensuality, tuberose, Provides a sophisticated and generous signature, fine, and then Madagascan vanilla, fine. The alien fusion bottle is a precious stone in its rough state. Behold, precious stone. Uh, a sacred talisman set in gold. Its glass is coloured with an incandescent red like the rarest ruby. Slightly translucent. Slightly translucent. You can see through the... Anyway. <laughs> Uh, this new fiery red bottle encapsulates the colour of a molten sun spreading a soft light of hope. Do you know what? I think if you were anywhere near a molten sun, you wouldn't have any shred of hope left. The power of an eclipse captured in a bottle. Oh, and here's something concrete. Alien Fusion Eau de Parfum is an oriental floral spicy creation by... Fanny Ball and Dominique Ropion. Of course, Dominique Ropion was instrumental in the creation of the original alien, and Fanny Ball is a, a, a protege of his. Um, uh, what have we got? Sorry, I missed some comments. Uh, Joanna also said, I adored Alien Absolute 2. Uh, Do you smell cinnamon, says Al. I wouldn't have picked it out. I wouldn't have picked it out. Not in the same way that, for instance, like in uh, Frédéric Malz and Lafayette Fils, which I wore the other day. But, 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 but in terms of that kind of almost glass-like heat that I think cinnamon has, yes, there is something in there. Ginger, yes, now, now that it's been said, but I'm still kind of thinking pepper. Maybe the combination of cinnamon and, and ginger creates a peppery effect. Vitali says, I think Luca Turin calls this kind of prose cod poetic. Yeah, I think he might not be the only person who would call it cod poetic. Uh, Nafia, do you get a weird savoury spice? I get, maybe that's where I was going with the pepper thing, Nafia, I suppose. That there is... But it, it, it sounds as though I'm being a bit of a killjoy on it. I, I really think it's interesting. I think it's good. And I think, I think they have done something genuinely 
hot cold to go back to the press release over the familiar jasmine cashmere and structure so thumbs up um aliens are difficult one to pull off though um for instance there is a there isn't a single new glare that um i kind of enjoy smelling on my better half it it, it, it just doesn't seem to work uh al says revelation sounds biblical i know i mean seriously over the top torrid and sustainable says mary <laughs> sounds like they're trying to crack the millennial market hmm do you think yeah maybe they are but 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 having said all of that um it it smells pretty good i'm intrigued by this one says peggy it may be my first mugler oh so not not actually a fan okay we're going to do one more then we'll do the classic and then we'll do the final one and we will try and get all of these done as quickly as possible because i'm always conscious of taking up so much of your time but at this halfway point at half past three in the afternoon here in the south of england i should just say thank you so much for tuning in to episode 26 of love at first sent with me Persilays, here on facebook live the first episode of the year who knows what sort of wonderful perfumes we we may smell which ones will end up on my top 10 of 2019 i kind of have a feeling that one of the ones that will end up on the top 10 is this one from last year from l'artisan perfumer but, but I'm, I'm not sure we'll get to it today maybe i'll actually write about it on the blog please 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 give me lots of thumbs and uh thumbs up and hearts and ask questions and leave comments and let me know where you are and let me know what sort of sense you might like me to cover in the future especially for the classic section. If you're watching after the live broadcast, you can leave a comment as well. And if you're watching the YouTube upload, please leave a comment too and consider subscribing. And don't forget that a few hours after the initial broadcast, I do a blotter update to say how the scents have developed on the blotters because, because, because we must, we cannot stress enough that these are first impressions of the perfumes and of course they can change a lot with the passage of time. Now, I would like to do something completely unknown to be completely new. This is something called Evolution from a brand called King's. And, and as far as I know, it's their first perfume, as far as I know, and, and their only perfume, and I think they're quite a new brand. And I've got just a little bit of press stuff, but it, this is what's exciting about doing all of this, but you know, actually trying things that we know very little about. I can just see that it's got the um, vegan certification, so on trend. Uh, which I guess must mean that it's, I guess it must mean that it's all natural, right? You couldn't have vegan certification for a synthetic. Could you, even if the synthetic hasn't actually harmed an animal in any way? Would anyone out there know? I don't know, we shall find out. Um, <clears throat> so, evolution. The, can you see that we're, we're kind of following a trend here, a theme here rather. We've gone from revelation to evolution. Uh, let us see what this is like. There's a sort of ape on the bottle, if you can see. Okay. If it is all natural, I'm a bit wary because there are very, very few people who can do good all natural perfumes. Oh, gosh. Whoa, camphoraceous. Um, really, really spicy. Look, here I'm getting tons of cardamom, which I love actually, probably one of my favorite notes. Um, and really quite camphory sorts of herbs. Um, Susie says, I think you can have vegan certification of synthetics. Yeah, because I suppose if they have not had, because vegan doesn't have to mean natural, does it? It just has to mean not from an animal source. And so if it's something that's been completely lab made and hasn't in any way, shape or form come into any contact with animal matter, then I suppose because, well, otherwise vegan, people wouldn't want to wear like plastic shoes, would they? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know anybody who's like really very strictly vegan, so not sure. Um, and actually a very strong plasticky note is coming through here, so um, it started well. It started with a really nice cardamom note, but the, the, the camphorous elements are kind of going into quite harsh, screechy, like nail varnish remover plastics. I wonder if it's trying to be a sort of bracing gents cologne so far. Let, let's give it a chance. Let's let's read a little bit about it. There's stuff on the box. Uh, evolution, it says, is a journey that unfolds from a primal base of earth and wood, travel through exotic spice to the hint of a jungle in bloom. 
A standout fragrance, yes, well, I don't think you get to say that. For the man with the confidence to grow, adapt and thrive. Groom like a king, empower men to shine. Uh, kings will fund, or that's the brand, will fund men's mental health projects and we are committed to raising awareness around the subject so when you groom with kings you are empowering other men to turn their lives around. Fair enough. Good for humans, apes and planet earth. True kings don't just take care of themselves, they take responsibility for the world. Okay, fine. Uh, they have a manifesto. Real strength starts from within. Real confidence means being ready to break the mould. The world needs heroes who care. This is all very Gillette, isn't it? Um, interestingly, it actually lists the essential oils that are in it. Patchouli, cardamom, vetiver, copaiba, ylang and eucalyptus, which would have been the, the camphoraceous element that I would have got. Where's my little press note? I don't think... Okay, actually it just, just repeats what I've just read about empowering men to shine. You kind of want to reduce that really, don't you? But, um, and not very much else there. So, hmm, yeah. Strong cardamom eucalyptus, but not much oomph, not much body. It hasn't got, hasn't got much backbone and it just sort of feels as though it's going to very quickly descend into Bit of a nothing, but I could be wrong. Let, let us give it a chance. Okay, so, you've all gone quiet actually. Time for today's classic choice, and I am pretty sure, I, I'm pretty sure that every single person watching right now, and probably just about most of the people who will be watching after the live broadcast, has uh, tried this one. Even if you don't like it or you don't wear it, you will have smelt it very 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 influential perfume one of the most influential perfumes of the last 20 or so years uh, and it is one of my personal favorites as well Ambre Sultan from Serge Lutens so now I'm just waiting for the volume of people gonna go oh my god how can you do that one it's awful it's terrible but you are still quiet so I'm going to carry on of course no longer produced in this bottle <coughs> although this wasn't the original bottle either um, uh, the, the the bottles have become larger now, and and I, th I think I think I've shown some of the new uh, Serge Lutens bottles on Love at First Scent here before. I first encountered this um, in a very busy place, actually, of all places where I could have encountered it, because it was at um, the large. Uh, oh, I love that SL. Oh, you you love that Serge Lutens. Sorry, says Karina. Yeah, me too. It was at the very very large, very busy. Sephora in Nice, not far from, from the, the seafront, you know, just, just a few minutes walk past that large square. And especially in the summer, that place is always just heaving, really, really busy. And, and at the best of times, that's not really an ideal uh, scenario in which to try a perfume you haven't tried before. But they had, they had a rather fetching Serge Lutens display. Um, with How many of you have seen this with, I think, like... Um, like a little mini tagine, a, a sort of clay tagine with with bits of um, I'm losing words with bits of frankincense in it and and cinnamon sticks and lots of other ingredients and it was a really really interesting eye catching compelling sort of display and I went over to it and it may have been my introduction to Lutens actually quite a few years ago um, and I was taken with a lot of them and there was a bit of me that, that kind of thought hmm the, the, these are these are all too good to to be smelt in this offhand way. But uh, Ambre Sultan was one of the ones that stayed with me then, and I thought, I need to come back to this one. Uh, Marta says, one of the best ambers ever still. I think, yeah, totally agree. And probably the best modern amber. And it's interesting, people are divided uh, over whether they prefer this one or Andy Towers' Le du Désert Marocain, which obviously is an amber as well. Um, it, it's no secret, you know, fanboy of Andy Towers' work that I am, I think he knows that I don't actually think that Lair is his best perfume, and I think he knows that as far as ambers go, I prefer Ambre Sultan. Um, but, but there seems to be a sort of either or with those two. Uh, Fahmi says, quite like Ambre Sultan. Okay, so a bit of a reserved <laughs> judgment there. And Gemma says, ooh, I thought that was going to be Chergy, but Ambre Sultan is lovely too. Mind you, I quite like that one as well. Um, no, I'm more than quite like it. I do like Chergy. Right, so Ambre Sultan, um, stolen from Madame Persilaise's dressing table 
she doesn't know yet and she probably won't know because she has far better things to do than <laughs> watch me on Facebook live but oh, this is just so good um, and for the for the few other oh Karina says I decided to try tuberose criminelle at Sephora in Lyon and what did you think for the few of you out there who don't know amber of course is not an actual specific ingredient in perfumery it is a blend <clears throat> usually a blend of labdanum, vanilla and benzoin but lots and lots of other things are added to it as well and over the years lots of perfume houses have also made um, ready-made if you like amber blends almost like a sort of amber pre-made block like a, like a sort of stock cube that they can sell to perfume houses to say oh look we, we made this amber so you can add it to your creations so that you don't have to go to the trouble of creating that amber block like you might put a stock cube in a soup to save you the bother of having to put in all the individual spices and herbs etc etc um, and all amber perfumes if they're going to be true amber perfumes must have somewhere at their heart that vanilla labdanum benzoin accord but in the early 90s 1993 I believe it was um, definitely the same face I make when I spray Arbor Sultan Bliss from Mary yeah I know it is, it is really meditative, isn't it? It is transporting. In 1993, Christopher Sheldrake, who now makes all of the perfumes for Lutins, um, took, the, took an amber base, but decided um, that he was going to make it quite bitter, quite herbal. And what I love about this is that you get almost this burst of, you know, like you can imagine that you've been chopping lots of tarragon, lots of marjoram, thyme, rosemary maybe, and then somehow you've roasted them and then you pulverize this stuff into a kind of bitter herbal powder and it's almost this stuff that they've put on top of that very sweet amber base which and and, and the two really really reinforce each other beautifully the, the 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 herbs stop the amber from being being too sickly or too cloying um and of course the the vanilla in the amber gives a really moorish silky enveloping quality to the herbs if you think of another you know classic amber which is much older than uh, Ambre Sultan you, you get, actually why am I hidden it away it should it should be given pride of place now um, you would think of Garland's Chalimar and and what Chalimar does that's interesting is that it makes <coughs> the amber really leathery and citrusy with that massive dose of bergamot at the top and Amber Sultan has been so influential. Um, almost all brands actually now that have a lot of perfumes have an amber perfume that in some shape or form owes something to uh, Lutins. <clears throat> and I remember the very first time I think that I met Frederick Val. He said that he quite often gets, uh, or used to anyway, submissions from perfumers saying, oh, I've made this. I wondered if you might like to add it to your collection. And he said that so often it would basically be a variation on Ampel Sultan. And interestingly, he hasn't gone down that route, has he? He hasn't got um, a real Ampel Sultan wannabe or clone in there. Of course, he has a classic amber. He has something that you can trace back to Chalamar, that being uh, Musque Ravageur, which is one of his best sellers. Karina, comment from Karina. Hang on, let me click more says, I was a bit shocked because the initial camphorous and burnt rubber note was so strong on me, I got a lot of looks. No, it, 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 but I think that's what makes this perfume. It, it, it is the shock of it, and as Edmund Rudnitska said, you know, all great perfumes have to have that shock element at the start. They have to shake us a bit. And that is what makes this odd and compelling and makes you come back. You know, it, it's not actually a perfume that's easy to dismiss, even though we have smelt it so many times and it, and it is such a, a hit. And I gather it is still um, one of one of the main sellers for the brand. So um, I, I still love it, and I and I I really really love smelling this on other people, especially on um, on the long suffering Madame P. Um, like all of the best perfumes, it has that transporting quality, and and I guess also interestingly, what what makes it modern is that. It is a bit of a block in that in that it is mostly linear. Um, you don't get a huge amount of you know top middle base development in it. Most of what you smell in the first couple of minutes is what you're going to smell towards the end. Um, 
such a comforting smell for me, says Nakia. Yes, I get that, and, and, and I suppose that's going to be vanilla, but there's something about it. It's almost as though it's surrounding you in this smoky atmosphere, isn't it? It's sort of saying, come inside the tent, you know, don't worry about the, the desert air outside. Um, and it's such a great name as well. Amr Sultan is, is, you know, is, is it the Sultan of the Ambers or is it an Amber for a Sultan? There is something genuinely desert-like and maybe Middle Eastern or North African about it. Of course, Serge Lutens has a very strong affinity with, with North Africa. He, as far as, as far as we know, as far as anybody knows anything to do with him, he does still live in Marrakesh. Um, but as I say, it's, it's those herby notes that almost, you know, when I'm kind of really focusing on them, that almost start heading into minty quality that, that really, really set this fragrance apart from everything else and, and, and make it, make it the, the, the classic that it is. Peggy says, a quick trip through the harem then. <laughs> Why would you ever want a quick trip? Surely that's one of the places. No. Okay, so uh, that was the classic for today. Serge Lutens' Ombre Sultan. If there are any um, particular classics that you would like me to do in the future, do let me know if I've got them. Uh, and, and if I think I might have something nice to say about them, I'll certainly consider um, including them. I, I have done that in the past. I think it was because of reader suggestion that we did a Dior. I can't remember now. Maybe another, maybe a Mal. I can't remember. But I'm open to suggestions. I take requests is what I'm trying to say. So... For the last one of the day, I am intrigued to try the other um, Kirchian, even though it said things like aromatic, which it's always like you think, oh, no, 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 what are you going to do? But let's try this. So we started with uh, gold, gentle fluidity from Maison Francis Kirchian. This is silver, gentle fluidity. Smaranda says, thank you very much for the comment, by the way. Have you done the new alien tropical thingy flanker today or just the new alien? I don't know the new alien tropical thingy flanker. What's that? I don't, I mean, I've done that one, which is alien fusion. I haven't done the men's. I think I'm a bit too scared to do the men's. Oh, Angel says Smaranda. Uh, I don't know about that one. I don't know about that one. What is it? I'll try and find out. While you're telling me about it, I will try and... Um, Open the silver gentle fluidity. A tropical flanker of angel. Do I want to know? Do I really want to try it? Okay, let me just write the thing on the blotter. This is silver gentle fluidity. Look at the mess we're making. I have to clear all this up afterwards. Such a hard lock, isn't it? Miranda says there's a new angel flanker cruise or something tropical anyway. Nope, don't know about it. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. But do you know what? I was at an airport not that long ago, and again, maybe, maybe I should have known about this, but I didn't. But I saw a whole load, and when I say a whole load, I think actually I mean three. Um, I think I may have seen three Mugler colognes at the duty-free shop. Uh, and they weren't the, 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 the Mugler cologne, which many of you will know and which I personally love. It, it almost felt like there was one which was supposed to be like a lemony one, and one was a, a blue one and a green one, I can't remember. And I didn't have time to, to, to stop and smell them, but I thought, ooh, I must contact Mugler when I get back home to ask about these new colognes. And I haven't yet, so whether they're an airport-only thing or a Europe-only thing at the moment... <clears throat> But why mess with cologne? I mean, maybe it wasn't selling very well, but that, that, that scent was genius too. And Smaranda says, yes, there are new Mugler colognes too. Well, there you go. And from, I forget where you're based, Smaranda. Maybe, maybe I just haven't been told about them, or maybe they've come to wherever you are first, or because I can't remember whether, I don't think you were in the UK from memory. Right, we finish with silver gentle fluidity, or gentle fluidity silver, from Maison Francis Curgillon. Always hard saying that surname. <clears throat> okay, here we go. This one was the one that was supposed to be what? Aromatic. Let me just try and... Yeah, woody aromatic. Uh... Ooh, you know what that means, don't you? Oh no, actually, close up. From, fr from that distance, I got those woody ambery notes, which we all love so much. Smaranda says they're out in Europe from what I've seen. And that has happened in the past. I think Mugler pushed things out first um, in mainland Europe before they do in the European country of the UK. 
for at least a few more weeks. <clears throat> hmm. Definitely not duty free exclusive, says Miranda. Okay. Right, silver is. Okay, maybe this isn't one going to be. This isn't going to be love at first scent. It. That junipery, citrusy, camphory top note is very, very much more marked in this one than it was in gold. And something that, you know, at the moment I'm reading as a kind of cliched 80s masculine note, a sort of dihydromersonol note, is also very, very strong. And this face doesn't lie. I'm struggling here. Maybe it'll get better as time passes. Um, I think what it's it's so not gentle. The other one was. Is this the one that has the word gentle emphasized? It is actually. It, it's it's actually it's, well so far anyway very far from being gentle. If anything, it's a bit harsh. And really trying to play the masculine card very overtly, which. I kind of thought was not the point of these. Uh, so very quickly, the men's one, fresh, vibrant trail. Yeah, well, it's certainly trying to be fresh. And it says it's in the Woody Aromatic Olfactory family. Main ingredients, juniper berry essence, nutmeg essence, coriander seed essence, uh, musks, ambery wood, and vanilla accord. Emphasis, with it, which is the same as the other one, but here the emphasis is on juniper berry essence. Boy, is it. Nutmeg essence and ambery woods or woody amber materials. You know where I'm going with this if you've watched any of these before, that the woody amber things that whew, I, I, I don't get on so well with those. Smaranda says, yes, thank you for rectifying the European aspect and I agree with you. I was just typing in a hurry. No, that's fine, don't worry, it's, it's, you're, you're okay. So they're not in, out in the UK stores yet, just duty free. As far as I know, they're not out in UK stores and the duty free in which I saw them was in Spain. Not, not in the UK, so perhaps they're not in the UK at all. Um, but, you know, I don't always go into perfume shops. In fact, sometimes I actively try to avoid them. But next time I'm in one, I will actually contact um, the office in, in London and say, look, are these Europe-only things at the moment, or are they coming to Britain anytime soon? This is... You know what, if, if, if Kershion wants to make a kind of fresh, woody, ambery, masculine, fine, obviously he's got to do that. But so far on paper, and, and, and a lot of these do need to be tried on skin as well, they, there seems to be a disconnect between the top and the base here, like there's a sort of chasm that, that needs to be filled by something, and it's like, it's like it's all trail, but nothing causing the trail, if that makes any sense at all. Um, it's all sort of fresh vapour and and not much body and yeah and it's all super clean shower gel as well well we shall see we shall see Mary says I think they're in major metro area department stores in the US uh, got a card of one sniff samples of them in the mail Oh, sorry, got a card of one sniff samples of them in the mail this past summer. That was you using the hyphen correctly, me being illiterate, sorry. Um, this past summer? Well then, you know, either they've just completely passed me by, or, or they're very under the radar in the UK, or, um, but I will try to find out. So, we have just about managed to do this in under an hour. I'm going to re-smell the blotters in a second, but don't forget that <clears throat> after the live broadcast, I'll do a blotter update on uh, Facebook, which will also be transferred to YouTube when this eventually gets uploaded to YouTube. <clears throat> Thank you all so much for tuning into the first episode of Love at First Scent for this year, which actually is already the 26th episode. We will try to do as many as possible. If there's anything particular that you'd like me to do in these episodes, for f you know, just for future reference, if you'd like me to spend less time on perfumes, more time for perfumes, more frequent but shorter episodes, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that I'll necessarily be able to do anything you suggest, but I will certainly take all suggestions into consideration. Last year we did a few single brand things as well, and I think, and I think they worked too, but it seems as though this is what people seem to enjoy more. Uh, and thumbs up, 
hearts, likes on YouTube, subscribers. Like I said, I'm trying to get to that 1,000 subscriber mark, which would be great. So let us sniff what we tried today again. We did Alien Fusion from Mugler, which is, which is as different um, from original Alien as you would want it to be, in the sense that it's not all that different. It, it's a twist on it, and that's fine. Smaranda says, I have a question or request. Please feature more Bottega Veneta scents. OK, I'll try to. If some come my way, I will remember that. Thank you very much. So Alien, I was taken with. I think that's probably the one that I fell in love with the most for, the, for today's episode. Then, uh, Clochion's Gold. Actually, that's developing really nicely. Um, I wonder which one he made first. I wonder whether he made this one and thought that gentle fluidity would be a good name for it and then and then had the idea of thinking, oh, well, perhaps I could do another one because this one seems to feel fit the concept a lot better, even though there is a kind of woody ambery note to it as well, but it seems a lot more finely judged. So gold, gold, I'm intrigued. And then we had the, the vegan one, uh, Evolution, which, yeah, it's still very cardamomy, quite thin. Not a lot to say about that. It, it, it's sort of quite monodimensional, really, which is a shame because cardamom oil is so not monodimensional. Uh, the classic was Andre Sultan. Um, Paloma says, really enjoyed watching this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much for saying that. I appreciate that. And thank you for tuning in. Um, Andre Sultan, I don't need to say anything about it. It's just just a masterpiece and silver i've only just sprayed so probably not fair to re-smell it but yeah and i don't know i don't know it doesn't it just doesn't have much body it, uh, I, uh, yeah see what it's like on skin perhaps there are some woody notes in it that need the, that need the heat of skin to warm them up okay i shall leave you in peace wherever you are enjoy the rest of your day or the rest of your evening thank you very much for tuning in uh ooh, question from smaranda have you tried the new tom ford belle du jour something i hate that name though yes and that's got a written review on my blog so if you go to persilace.com and just scroll down it, it, it's one of the reviews of this year um you won't need to scroll very far and um Read the review. You, 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 you'll see what I thought. Okay, this is where I lurch forward. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. Take care. Bye.